Well, good afternoon, Das, and also good afternoon, Rosemary. Hello. Is this welcome to the two Ronnies show? The, t- the two Ronnies. I said to the chairman, yes, it was the two Ronnies, and she says I was the fat one of the two. I bang out order. <laughs> bang out order. You only assumed that's what No, you did. You said, I've got, no, I've got it on text. I'm keeping the text. And let the fans know that like, you think I'm tubby. <laughs> I'm sure they'll pull out their own views on that one, Das. <laughs> Well, the, uh, the fact that you're both sitting here, we're in the sponsor's lounge because it's nice and cool in here on a very, very yep. hot day, um, is because this is going to be a slightly different format today. And uh, Rosemary, I see you sitting there with a piece of paper, so I'm just going to simply say over to you. Thanks, and hello everyone. Please excuse this being scripted, but we want to be as clear as possible and not miss anything. Today is about us updating on all that has been done and setting out the challenges we will face. Next Wednesday, we'll be communicating our strategy for the club, being both sustainable off and more competitive on the pitch during this coming season, which will be unlike anything we have ever experienced before. I don't want to swamp everyone with too much detail, but if any fan or sponsor wants more detail, it is there. Please, in the first instance, Contact me on the club's admin email. We will be as open, clear and transparent as we can be. In particular, we would love to meet with current or prospective sponsors to go through things more closely. This is a challenge, but also an opportunity to demonstrate to the world of football what a groundswell of local fans and a supportive community can accomplish. We have already seen a glimpse of that with the great success of Get Behind the Shirt. And as a football club, our ability to pull together is second to none. Of course, the primary challenge this season will be due to COVID-19. Clubs are waking up to the implications of what may come. Yesterday, sadly, former conference club Droylston, who was formed in 1892, resigned from the Northern Premier League and cups and went into isolation, hibernation for a year. In recent weeks, we have seen Kins Lynn set their season ticket price at £569. Dover has raised their prices to higher levels, gone part-time, made their early games adult price only and put all their players on the transfer list so they wouldn't take a pay cut. Both these clubs have benefactor income which we don't have. As of this week, only nine of the 24 National League clubs have released season ticket and admission details. The reason for this is obvious. Until we know whether we're allowed 500 or 2,500 fans, we cannot set admission prices for the club to operate. In fact, at a National League meeting yesterday, all clubs were strongly advised not to release season tickets as things are uncertain and subject to change. The plan at the moment is that the season will start on the 3rd of October and we are pushing forward positively on that basis. Recapacity, our best guess, and it is just that, a guess. At the moment it is about 1100, which is half our usual attendance and considerably less than our total of season ticket holder tickets. We are pleased to have appointed Nick Davidson as our COVID-19 officer. And many of you will have read his post on the site. The regulations currently run to over 80 pages. We are very grateful to Nick. Alongside COVID-19, it is well known that Woking has an annual budget deficit in normal times of around several hundred thousand pounds. We occasionally get windfalls like ground sharing, a cup game, or a player sale like Joe Ward a few years ago, but those are never guaranteed and never budgeted. During the development process, we received additional funding. If the plan had been successful, then further financial support was written into agreements. These were also contingency plans in place, so if we failed to advance the stadium development, we had those plans. But with COVID-19, those plans have become largely impossible to progress. We have to be clear that COVID-19 is the biggest economic challenge the country has faced since World War II. There is now talk of a second spike, much greater than the first, coming in a few months. At our level, 
match days and a vast bulk of our income. But by season launch, we will have had no football related income whatsoever for over six months. No programs, no bar, no food, no hospitality or gate income whatsoever. And also negligible hall hire on non-match days. The coming season looks like smaller crowds and bar and hospitality income slashed. One National League club we spoke to will not be able to open their bar at all as that will be used for away changing. In addition, the FA is in financial crisis and making redundancies and our money from the Premier League has been cut by £40,000. I don't weep for them but Arsenal are making a lot of redundancies. There is therefore no additional help expected from higher up the football pyramid. We might be surprised. The good news, and there is good news, is that Woking has managed its funds very well in recent years, probably in more detail than ever before. Two years ago, we made a profit for the first time in 23 years, largely helped by the Watford match. And last year, we made a negligible loss partly helped by careful management through furlough and other grants. We are an exception in being effectively debt free and never failed to pay staff and players on time, despite now having no outside help or benefactor. This careful management is the reason we have not needed to panic to sell season tickets, but we have managed the immediate cash flow very carefully. We also have a very loyal core of excellent sponsors who are friends and fans of the club. However, the structural deficit of several hundred thousand remains and COVID had added a once in a lifetime challenge. But be assured that your money, and the bulk is from fans, is being treated with absolute care. What we do have is a fantastic and committed fan base and a great reputation in the community both the budget over nearly nine years has been the best example we know of a consistent fan-led fundraising scheme, now well over £200,000. Get Behind the Shirt raised £70,000 in a matter of weeks. We have a fantastic manager who works 24-7 for the club and community, and alongside him a great management team and set of players. We are grateful for their patience and hopefully they can understand to some extent at least, the specific circumstances we are facing. We have done a huge amount of work to get Flans together that will set us up for the next season and as we pull together and respond as we hope, we are confident of matching Dowsey's weekly budget from last year and hopefully increasing it. Next Wednesday we will outline our plans to address the challenges and give details of how we can all play our part. Thank you, David. Thank you, Rosemary. Well, I was turning to you. You've have I got, have you got my script there? No, you don't read scripts. <laughs> you have, uh, yep. you have said out loud on uh, yep. two of these interviews, I think, that you're a big member of Team Rosemary. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yep. Not yep. the prettiest of pictures. I don't mean <laughs> you, Rosemary. Well, you can't tell me, Chairman I mean, Lee. Oh, can you? <laughs> as just presented from the uh, sheets of paper. Yeah. But hard to argue yep. with any of that. I trust that. I trust Rosemary very much. Um, I'm very demanding bloke, as you know, as she'll tell you I'm very demanding bloke and what I want to do. I want to get the club in the football league. You know, I, I know the hard work what's went in, um, and I know, you know, we've got to save the club, I've got that. But it can't, when I first come to the job, me passion would take the job. I, I stick with by the same guns, I want to be working manager, I don't want to be anybody else's manager. I stick me guns, I enjoy working with me. Um, I stick me guns that, um, you know, but you can't take the passion out of the lad, you take the passion out of me, I'm wasting time. You take this cry wolf and go on the table and knock the tin, you took, you took everything out of me. So that's when I grew up and tried to fight it myself. I, like Martin Newman's was great, a lot of local businessmen down the road. I went to Blackie's pub, I was a thousand pound, just found a pound. I went to another fella, because a check he didn't want to be mentioned, because a check for a thousand pound. You got Judy Sally, for example, for the girls team, all that, the girls team who we try to help. We want to try to raise money to do the fight right as well. Just looking at examples where it will all help. So uh, I get the one, um, I get the, the passionate, I get the ones who are losing players, I get the ones where you know, it's been a, a great two years, but I've always said the ones where if I didn't think I could take them in the football league, I'll jack it in. I think I can. So whether I, I, I like anything, I, I'm 
I want to have a fight and have a go at it. I'm sure everybody does as well. So yes, it is hard, but it's very frustrating as a manager. Imagine as a manager, I'd say, can't do this by yet. Can I do that? I'll do a bit more now because I've been given a bit more money from the other night, to be honest. I'm allowed to say that, aren't I? Yes, you are. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and stuff. And, um, so I can work on a couple of deals today and tomorrow. So uh, yes, will I go around stamping the ground? Of course I will, because I'm not sort of look. But like, uh, see, uh, will I moon? I'll moon every day. Of course I do. But the bottom line is, you know, if you take that out of me, you take a lot out of us. Yeah. So uh, I will knock on houses, I will go down to, like, it's great, uh, uh, Black News, I mentioned Black News, they're all coming up to date to get the picture of what we appeared for, the NHS. Look, you think about look, a couple of do. That wouldn't happen a couple of years ago. You want to you get in with people in back them. You talk, your responses were mentioned, Arnie Lee, mm -hmm. John Fortune, great people, great. But we need more of them, and I'm willing to fight tooth and nail myself to go in the community to try to help. And for ask for help for once, you know, we're talking about doing a soccer camp around the corner where all the money goes to boost the budget. We have to do a bit anyway. So uh, yes, I understand. Yes, very frustrated as a bloke. I've had a couple of bad months, to be honest, as you know, off the pitch. But the bottom line is, you know, I'm here still here now being working manager. So I'll, I'll let the fight to finish. Good. I'll come back to you in a moment, if I may. Um, to go, turning back to you, Rosemary, a yeah. couple of appointments. You mentioned one, Nick Davidson as our COVID-19 officer. That's a poison chalice if ever there was one, surely. How did you persuade him to take that? Well, it was interesting. I, I discussed it with Dave Curtis as our operations manager. They'd have to work closely together. And I didn't give a name. And we both said the same name at the same time. Well, and I phoned Nick up and he said, yeah, of course I'll do it. I'm already doing it for my kids team. I think it's Send United. And I have to say, <laughs> I think he uh, oh, oh, originally really? looked, I mean, pages and pages, and the guy <laughs> oh, no, was trained every day. But he, with it, before really? he went on holiday, he had all your he's stuff for training. He's a great lad, a great kid. You know, brilliant. You know, you've seen a chairman there doing a script. Whatever you do, don't get Nick on here. <laughs> it lasts for three days, I'm telling you that now. It lasts for three days, I'm telling you. So uh, I think it's a great appointment, um, a great lad. Local lad and all, massive fan of the club, yeah. and and he, he come in with me, Martin Taylor, Ian Malcolm, and we sat round years, and uh, he come out and it was perfect what he said, and when you accept, because sometimes you come away, especially me, because I, whatever, he, he, um, he, I come away exactly, you know, and exactly where we were, so I thought it was no. a great appointment. And Brilliant. and he's already got a couple of people who've offered to help, somebody who works in that field, who's a fan of the club, and other fans offered, so he's getting a few people to come in, but you have to have a named COVID-19 yes. officer, and yes. he accepted immediately, more right. fooled him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Um, the other appointment, which uh, hasn't been mentioned yet to my knowledge, is we have a new finance uh, senior officer. I'm not sure what his exact See, title is. I'm not, funnily enough, I, I'd be surprised that I can't quite dream the title up, but he's taken over from Peter Bellatti, who's yep. been working with the club for quite some time, and has for some time said he'd like to stand down. And in the end, we went out to advert. Um, enormously good quality of people applied. Uh, Sean was the one that was chosen. I wasn't part of the appointment, and I think there's. Um, <laughs> oh, I love him. You have oh, comments, I aren't do, you? I you actually love like him. a finance I do, person. I do, I do. Because, you know, me and finance, <laughs> more like, you know, stuff. And he came in the office, and it was fantastic. He speaks his mind. He can do that, you can't do that. Brilliant he is, and all that, you know. He looks as soon as somebody can take doing black, he's never be able. He doesn't drink, so I've got to work on that, to be fair, and all that, you know. But now there's Martin Taylor. So uh, if, I, if I work on that, I think we've got a great chance, and all that, you know. But what a fantastic guy, what a fantastic bloke, and all that, you know. So it's, what, it's one of them where I, look, I looked at him, and I thought, um, he'll do for me. I thought he's really, really good, mm. really firm, really, this is what you can't do, this is what you can't do. Really, absolutely no worries at all. So I thought he was a really top, top fella. I really right, like him. Right. And if I can get him drinking, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I've got a spare bedroom in the house. Yeah. And and he has a lot of, he was involved with Abbey Rangers, so he comes up with a fair bit of knowledge of right. football as well. And I, really we haven't actually said, I think we should, his name's Sean Carey. Oh, sorry. I don't know why he put his name, I didn't remember. <laughs> I didn't ask him his name. You know what I mean? Well, and, and the last but very important detail about him is that, like me, he drives a red Mini. Oh, does he? Oh, no. right. Everybody's got, everybody's got the first, David. <laughs> plus, he's better looking than you, to be fair. Well, most people are. Let's, let's turn back to you. Well, there are exceptions to that. Well, can I just interrupt and say we have a third change? Oh, sorry. And that, of course, is Ian Nixon has yes. stood down after seven years of uh, being the trust representative on the board, felt he wanted to go back to concentrate on communication and things yeah. like that. Um, so he's still very much part of helping the club out. And uh, the trust as an interim appointment have um, George Bennett has oh, come on to me well, in his place. And I think for those who possibly don't know the name, well, I'd be flabbergasted if they didn't, but George has been in the club. He was actually a secretary in the supporters club 
when I was vice chair of the supporters club and he and his wife were on the gold rush and missed yep. the first half of virtually every match sorting out gold rush. So he's somebody who knows the club inside mm. out and upside down. His job at the moment, he can't travel abroad, which is what he normally does. Yep. So he agreed or was persuaded, I'm not quite sure of which, to uh, fill in for him until the trust have their AGM. I think you'd yep. be a, an excellent representative yep. for the trust. Will, I, I go back to the days when George used to drive the supporters bus. Oh, he I did, mean, didn't he? Because he yes. was a registered coach driver. Yes, and yes. I remember that when I used to run the coaches, yep. two or three times a year, he'd actually drive Newton's coaches. They'd he let used to, do, be the, to keep his the license driver going. Yeah, when when the first one going. had to take yeah. the tacker out, yeah. George used to drive he the car. He did, I remember. Yeah. Well, the way things are going, yeah, you can drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> he's no longer got a coach licence, Dale. That's right, oh, he's, um, he's doing all of it. And plus, on the other side, like, you know, from a player's point of view, we work Nick are done and all that, you know, and stuff like that. Hey, Annie, Annie Lewis, come in, I've got you saying here, oh, son. Oh, Andy, hello, okay. Andy. Right, lad. Sorry, I can't see you on my glasses. Oh, right. oh, I've just got the camera, yeah, that's another 50 we, we grand, he's promised. Filmed. Well done, Andy, good night. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, we're being filmed, <laughs> I'll warn you now. Right, okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. so, bottom line is, um, from a player's, uh, the job, what Nick had done with the players, um, was second and none, to be honest, Nick, um, religiously as well, I know a lot of lads are, religious faiths and stuff like that. I've got a bit of it about this view. Yeah. And um, so uh, we do appreciate the work Nicola done with the players as well, so we look forward to yes. on your coming. Right I'm now. very very conscious of, uh, this might turn out to be quite a long one, but I think well, there's, there's one, or two, done, there's one or two quite important things I still want to cover. Mm. Let's turn yeah. to you, Dows, firstly. Yeah. Firstly, and by far the most important, you've not been too well recently. No, I haven't told anybody. Well, I'm fine now, Lee. I will be, but I, so I can't do a raid on Sunday. Um, yeah. Oh, no, I haven't told you this. So, no, so uh, last week, when you were putting me budget and things like that, um, I was actually whacking morphine down in hospital because a couple of years ago I had kidney stones and as Gabby Hill had them, you got yeah. to deal with them. But I went in there half hearty and said, I'm out of it, just kill it, whatever. And I was meant to go and back and back and I didn't bother. My own fault. But so when COVID comes in, it went straight from my kidney stones, infected them, things like that. So uh, I had to go in hospital last week for four days. Um, that's why I wasn't around Monday. In fact, the first day I saw you on Friday, I said I had a water infection. You did. I did. And, you um, did. And, and, and I was sympathetic. You were. I know. I, I said was. get on, get antibiotics. Oh, you actually said get out of the room. Actually, so anyway, <laughs> it, so uh, the bottom line is, um, I so I can't do a bike raid, but Steve Alado runs it. Lloyd and Scott are doing it, and Martin Taylor said he'll do it with me in a couple yeah. of weeks when I get. So next week, I think I get me stent out job done. It, it, I've been getting it drained. Anybody who's had kidney stones, you know, it's a very painful thing. Very painful, and you know, and I'm like, ah, it's all right. <laughs> it's so like, it is so. But it's one of the things I didn't want to say because, you know, I had the hernia, I had the curve, and I had this, and I thought it's a time the need that I needed to, people to think I was around on text or emails, even if I wasn't around in person. So I blanked it, and I didn't tell anybody, uh, or one or two close people. Uh, at all. So, uh, yes, I have had it. Yes, I've got a stent in. Yes, I've got to get it out in the next 10 days. Yes, I'll be right as real. But I should have done it a couple of years ago and I've never done it. Yeah. Now, are you going up there on Sunday to cheer them in? Oh, I'll cheer Lloyd in and, and get I'm Scotty. To be up there I know. To cheer you in. Getting Scotty with his stabilizer bonds, get them off and all that, you know, and stuff like that. So, it's, um, it's a wonderful cause and a wonderful charity, isn't there? Yeah. But, I, but I think everybody knows this. I've never once said I'll do a charity event and not do it. Yeah. And the bloke knows that, Stephen. He's fit and I didn't. So, what I will do is um, give it a couple of weeks when I get it out. It'll not take me long. Martin Taylor said he'll do it. Steve said, even Nick Davidson said, it'll be a good oh, we'll do it. Do it. Uh, and, so, um, and we'll raise money for a charity. So, yeah, health wise, I'm fantastic. I wasn't last week, to be honest. I'm blinking painful. Like, Gabby yeah. Hill will tell you about that. Yeah, Gabby yeah. had them, it was very painful. But um, it's, I should have went back when I first got it done. I've never done it because I thought, oh, I'll be all right. But, um, but I had to go in there as I do. Um, and I had to shoot them as I do. And, and I've just got to pass them as I'm doing. So, uh, um, Eight days in, nine days in, so I'm getting better by the day, by pre season, I'll be fine. Stent comes out even better, so there's no hassle. Are you prepared to reveal the story about your shoe? Aye. <laughs> 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 oh, didn't even tell I miss. <laughs> so uh, you get into hospitals, and, right, St. Peter's, right? And I've got a, a bear there, bear there, bear there, bump, bump, bump. Right, I'm in the third, I'm right next to the window, right? Now I'm in a lot of pain, a lot of freaking pain I am, because I've just had it done and I've come round and whatever, like, you know, and stuff like that. You know, the bloke over there, right, he's got a load of snow. <laughs> I've ever heard me leave, so it's two o'clock in the morning, but it's loud. Now, at the time, I can't do this or do that because it's flicking so. I've got a drip coming from us at the main time because I've already got draining infection out of this because that's what it was. So I'm trying to get a sock and I threw the sock at him. Bosh, missed him and all, you know, and stuff like that. So I got my shoe. <laughs> so I threw my shoe, what landed on his tummy. <laughs> 
And the blokes complains about the room is the next ward and all that and got us out the ward, so that's it's a funny story, yeah, but I was trying to keep it under wraps. <laughs> Yeah, 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 stop snoring, will you? You know, there's an argument going on, and yeah, it pushed me bed down and you put me there. So, so you got evicted? Oh, but I got in a room by myself for the night, to be oh, fair, well. so I was alright. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good result. Oh, uh, so there you go, that's what's happened. That's okay. I apologise, I did apologise next year. I did apologise. It was year. the effect of the. Uh, oh, it was the morphine well, and all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would behave like that. And plus, he was an all shot fan as well. Oh! <laughs> so it was never wrong for us, to be fair. <laughs> no, I'm only joking, all the shot fans are only joking because they're under there. A good club as well. Of course. Yeah. <coughs> Rosemary, back to you. Yes. Um, there was an announcement on the club website yesterday about lots of false and disinformation mm. about around Harry Arter. Um, I'm not sure how much that cleared the waters. Are you able to clarify the situation at all? Really, the only thing I can say is that we are dealing with the matter. We're aware of it. But it is confidential between Bournemouth and Fulham and the player. So, you know, we know what's going on but most of the information that's out there publicly is incorrect so as soon as we can say any more we will okay right. things like are difficult I know so complicated, you, it's complicated because we, we saw a lot when I was at Hampton and Richmond to um, to Wigan and all that you know who went on um, to um, the port that went to Wigan no, did, I he, get, did he donate those shorts well, to I was I got, that, yeah. I, I put Wigan Athletic Wigan shorts. There's a lot called Graham Jones, actually. But anyway, Jamal's there flying now, £2 million, and brilliantly. But we've done the deal, but we were very, when I was manager, I'd done the deal myself. And you were being amazing. Well, if we do this little deal here, yeah, and you were trying to do it at Wigan, well, if we do this, we don't have to do that. The I'm not saying that's formal at all, uh-huh. but these are the sort of things that clubs will do because they'll say, well, if you give us the money and we do it that way, we don't have to do that. And, something, something good. and I, I was disgusted at that, to be honest, because I don't know how you are, I think, but the bottom line is, I was disgusted at you, I think, because I thought, we well, still you play for 25 grand, you're going up to Wigan for £2 million, you're trying to tuck me up. And all, you know, so I, I, I rang a chief executive, I said, I thought what's worth, I think you're not very good, because I don't think things like that. You should get what we want, but there will be little, little writing things there, little inks there, which change the whole course to not mm. to give us money. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that's the case, but that's the sort of things you used to do. So I imagine we're not as simple as people think. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Okay. Um, briefly, then, um, the league have said since we last spoke, the season starts on October the third. Yeah. We we're, 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 we're having a girls' league at the minute for seven aside. <laughs> <laughs> We can't be certain that that will actually happen. No, you can't. Now. No, you can't. Um, well, I thought it was going to start your, at 12. What's your timetable, if given that that is... Well, the demanding bloke exactly. I said I was, I said it was going to happen on the 12th. And, um, yeah, the, you got that wrong. I mean, you... Didn't I mean, you, believe me, did you? I, I'm totally talking to me. Sure. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> it, it's one of them where um, they went in, had a great meeting, because they um, said it not it'll start the first week of whatever, so she got that one, right? So, uh, <laughs> so uh, the bottom line is that... Um, the, the, they made a the right decision because if you go below our leagues from mm. the conference south and north, the crowds aren't that great. If you go above it, they get TV money, so we're in the middle. So I thought it was a sensible thing to do. And if it's not on the second, I'll let put my hands up again. And all the players' contracts are awards, that's so, you know, the money and stuff like that. So we're, we're well aware, you know, where we are with players' deals. Um, then the bottom line is, I'm, I'm working because I've got a plan for If I do a plan from there, yeah. and it hits you in the face. Yeah. I know there's teams in our league who are training at the minute, but there's also teams who aren't. We just got time it right. What's mm. the point of training at the minute where there's nine weeks ago at the start of the season? Yeah. We'll train next week where it's seven weeks ago and give us a right pre-season. That's I, what we'll do. I think the other point is that uh, the 3rd of October was set because the government guidance currently yeah. Yeah. is that Stadia will unlock on the 1st of October. The problem is now we know government have halted some of the unlocking they were planning to do because they want to get kids back yep. into school. Lower league clubs are already saying they can't operate without the fans, interesting right. enough. Mm. Um, we've had that from local lower league clubs here. So I think there's a lot to run on this, but we have to work, and you're we're right, going, on the timetable we now have officially. And, you know, I don't think we'll have a firm fixture list till probably September. Uh, that's the, the feeling. Um, so it, it's going to be incredibly rushed when it does happen, and it's just right for planning to yeah. do on what we think the most likely scenario is going to happen. I think if the government puts back the stadia opening, I think from my knowledge of what other chairmen are saying, our league won't be playing until we can have fans in. Albeit it could be a re- very restricted fan base. And of course we are looking at streaming, which fans are concerned about. So there's a lot going on and it really does change. I can phone Dallas at nine in the morning yeah. and by five in the evening it's changed again. 
Yeah. And, it, 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 and we're <coughs> aware we have a lot saw in all the ones who are so we have tried to fight their corner, but lots of we haven't got jobs. We're doing stand yeah. still here. Like Boz has been absolutely unique. If you're gonna get food and fresh, get it from Boz, Ignobio oh, yeah. here. Brilliant He's guy. been absolutely brilliant. Get Moose have a job, Craig Ross a job. We've got Dave Curtis's mate who's also got Ross a job. So we're well aware of a lot who can't work. We're trying to help them out as well if it was difficult yeah. time. Yeah, so if any of our fans have a spare job that job? help with, yeah. um, we may have a player who might be prepared to do it. That's right, right there, Dale. 100%, and you want a handy man? Don't give me a call, I'll find somebody <laughs> yeah, for you. No, don't give me a call. But, um, uh, on a serious note about this start date, it, if that gets put back, we are then back into the scenario of either regionalising the two, the North and South, the, the National League into North and South, or playing each team once. Again, possibly. The beat, look, it's, the honest truth is, Ruth me right. I'm like, we're going to start next week. She's like, we're going to start at Christmas. We want to get in between. We're not seeing that, but that's where we are. Nobody knows. No. So Nobody I've got to plan a worse scenario like I've been doing for the last couple of months. Of and that's what we've done. I'm talking to players, a couple of players a day. Um, I'm, I've been given a bit more money to spend. I'm doing that. We need help. Like, listen, this is what I'm talking about. We do need help, which was worth we'll setting the paper this week. And they have to crack on. Because mm. what's the point? Is my, my <coughs> biggest thing is, and that's why I demand as a bloke, we can see a. Uh, it's your right. Look at do a look at this. Look at that. Mm. Look at the top teams. I want to be the top team. Yeah, I'm above I'm top, so that's where I come from. Also. So the other point, Dallas, and I think it's important to make the players who have signed yeah. have been absolutely brilliant. Agreed, they right. understand the situation. They're working with the club. We we can't fault the players that you've already excellent. signed. Can yeah, we? Yeah, they are excellent. excellent. But right. it's not Dallas's fault, and I think it's important for me to say this that he's been restricted as to we as he can sign because until we see the season unfolding, we are protecting fans' money. And I think it's important we make that point. This is fans' yep. money we're spending. We so we have to be careful that we spend it wisely. Sure. Yep. I think at this point, I'll thank you both very much for your time. And you we'll call it a day for this week. I just um, got it, I got it up, I got my script. <laughs> you couldn't have read it anyway. Uh, just just oh, yeah. to remind, I, I'm not sure if this is a reminder <laughs> or if, if you mentioned it or not, but there will be a further update, uh, video update on Wednesday where you'll be giving rather more detail. Probably um, late on Wednesday, but sometime on Wednesday. Some of us do. I know Dallas works really hard, but I also have a, yes. a job that I have to do. So, uh, right? Yes, <laughs> I do. Excellent. Thank you very much.